Hello, hello, family. Today is Wednesday, so it must be Wine Lovers Wednesday. Let me tell you, I am so excited about today's guest because, like, I've been following her career, and um, and we've been emailing each other, and I'll call her randomly, like, can you give me this information? And so it is so nice to finally meet you, Shay. So welcome to Facebook Live. LinkedIn, I can no longer say that it's just Facebook Live because we're also on LinkedIn today, but welcome, welcome, welcome to Wine Lovers Wednesday. Thank you. I've been watching, I've been watching you do this with other phenomenal women in wine. And so I'm just, I'm stoked to be here, ready to just chat. That is so cool. So tell people who you are. I'm Shay Frechette. I am co-owner, co-wine maker at Frechette Winery, which is a little small winery in Washington state. We're on the dry side of the state in, in eastern Washington, not the wet side of the state where Seattle is. But we make bold red wines that are full of flavor. And our wines focus on a little tiny postage stamp ABA here in the state of Washington called Red Mountain, which I think we'll be talking about today, too. Yes, yes. yes. So I read your background and um, I think it's really interesting. And I think how you got to Washington is more interesting. So you tell this story about you and your husband who you work with and he's the winemaker at um, the vineyard. You had this coin toss because you wanted to be close to family. So I'm assuming your family was in South Carolina. Is that it? Yes. Okay. And his family was in Washington. And then whoever won the coin toss, that's where you were going to live. That's right. Right. So when you saw that coin land in his favor, what did you think? Well, I said best out of five. <laughs> I want another <laughs> shot. So best out of five. But since we agreed that wherever it landed, that's where we would move. I just really had to sit with that. Um, I checked to see if it was a two-headed coin and it wasn't. So life brought us here. We were living in sunny Southern California at the time and really wanted to start a family and relocate near one of our sets of parents. And so mm -hmm. that coin landed on a head switch, landed us in Washington. And then from there, we just decided we wanted to do something that would give us goosebumps. And we both love wine. So we thought, what the heck, let's, let's go into wine. So that's a big jump. It's a huge jump. That that is a big jump because you in your former life, you weren't, I mean, you you enjoyed wine, but you weren't in the wine industry. You weren't in hospitality. Is that correct? Correct. No, I was a corporate trainer. So I the crazy thing is that I was a uh probably like in most departments, it falls under human resources. It's the mm -hmm. organization development folks. It's the people who do all the leadership training. They coach uh, maybe some of the managers and directors at the organization. That's what I did. I led that team. And I'd done some form of training for 20 years at that point. And then you said, okay, let's open a vineyard? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you know, I know it sounds crazy, but I think I think people do these leaps of faith and make the decision to follow their dreams um, every day. You know, what I did is not unusual. I think that, you know, sometimes you hear these stories and they may inspire someone else to, you know, to, to do that and follow mm -hmm. their dreams. But, you know, at the time for me, although it was wild and it was crazy, it was it was doable. It was tangible. And I I believed that. So um, so although it, it does sound crazy, it, it was, you know, it was something that I did. I don't regret it. Um, I'm having a lot of fun and um, I'm still learning. So how long how long have you had the winery and the vineyard? We flipped that coin in 2010. We got started in making the wine in 2011. And at that same time, we were knocking on doors, asking people to sell their property to us because there was nothing for sale in the Red Mountain AVA. It's very small okay. AVA. A lot of the owners, a lot of the winemakers owners live on property, mm -hmm. and, um, but there wasn't anything for sale. So we knocked on doors and finally got a spot in 2012. And we remodeled and opened the winery in 2013. 
Okay. So although when folks ask, well, how long have you been open? Um, we'll be celebrating 10 years this year because we opened in 2013. Okay. But we started making wine two years before that. And that wine aged for two years before we, we uh, made it available to sell. You know, they always say, if you want to make a million dollars in wine, you have to invest too. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think it might be if you want to lose a million dollars. I'm not just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. You know, I think that the way that I, and I'll just speak from what I just in talking to some of the um, pioneers of Washington wine and some of the folks who've been doing this for a really long time, you know, some of the folks, not everybody, but some of the folks, you know, they kind of started this, um, you know, as something that truly is a passion they love, but they were doing something else. Like they were working mm -hmm. someplace else. And this was one of those things that they, um, started in their garage and you know on the weekends they had a slab right. of wood over the forklift and you you know they were pouring this wine or maybe it was in their basements and um it's just developed into this thing where, where folks are coming you know they're going to school to learn how to make wine and they're coming into companies and then starting their own brands and it's their livelihood now and so i think in our area at least from what some of the folks who've been doing this for a while have shared with us is that they see more and more folks like um like our story and what we've been doing okay. that they have had a career and they come into wine or they've gone to school and they learn how to make wine where maybe they have a little more um a little more support than they did back then Okay. Okay. And I just want to um, tell um, those who are listening in, hey, Alicia, Alicia is one of our members and she is also a part of Black Girls Wine Society. So thanks for joining us today. If the people who are listening in, if you have any questions for Shay, please, 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 please put them in the chat and we will share them with everyone. Um, and the other thing I want to clarify is because I am, like I shared with you earlier, I am in the, the D.C. area right outside of, of D.C., which a lot of people outside of this area refer to it as Washington. This is not, Shay is not in D.C. at all. She does not have acres in D.C. She is in Washington State. So she is in the Red Mountain area. Um, what is that like? What, what makes that ABA so unique? Well, when I, I'm glad that you talked about which Washington makes you know, when I say I'm from Washington, folks go, oh, D.C., no, mm -hmm. Washington State, oh, Seattle, no, <laughs> Eastern Washington. Um, so where, where we are in Eastern Washington, it is ag country. And I know we call it the heart of Washington wine country, but most of the hops in the U.S. are grown here. We grow apples and onions and potatoes. And, you know, there's just like we berries. We grow so many ag products here because we have such great climate and soil and all the compositions and characteristics that make for great um, growing conditions. So we're very dry here. We're desert like. In fact, we get less than eight inches of rain. We have very sandy soils. Um, we get we get some crazy winds here. Um, like in the spring and in the fall. Mm -hmm. And so it's um we we since it's so dry, we also drip irrigate. So we have the mighty Columbia River and the Yakima River um, that we pull water from to irrigate irrigate our crops here. Um, so it's one of those areas that um, wine grapes thrive in. We grow um, in our state, um, the most widely grown red wine variety is Cabernet Sauvignon. And really? Yes, the most widely grown red is cab. I would love for any folks listening to toss in the chat what they think the most widely grown white wine variety is. <laughs> uh, see if you if you can guess that. But we do grow a lot of um, Bordeaux varieties when it comes to red. So a lot of mm -hmm. cab and Merlot. Um, we grow a little bit of uh, Petit Bordeaux and okay. Malbec, a little bit of Carmenere, a lots of Syrahs grown here. Um, what about Cap Franc? Is that a, a big varietal there? Cap Franc is probably one of those lesser known varieties. And so okay. we grow it very well here. In fact, we make a Cap Franc driven blend as mm. well as a single variety Cap Franc. So we'll be releasing in May in, in our wine club here, 100% uh, Cabernet Franc, which I think is a lovely variety and it's a beautiful variety to work with. It is. It definitely is. Yeah, it is. It is definitely a nice. So are you closer to the coastal line? Like if you were to look at a map, 
you would be on, you would be closer to the Pacific. Is that? No, I'm further in. So I'm closer okay. to like uh, Idaho. Oh, okay. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. That, yes. So if you come, yeah. if you go away from uh, Seattle, away from the coast, you see the Cascade Mountains. Mm -hmm. So that causes that rain shadow. So that's why we, the, the, you know, we were dry on this side and they have most of the moisture on the other side of the Cascade Mountains. So if you keep driving, we're about three hours east of Seattle. Okay. Okay. And so do you have um, high elevations in that, in that particular area or is it pretty flat? No. So we are, where Frisha is, we are less than 600 foot. Okay. Um, and our Red Mountain actually is right over a thousand foot in elevation. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That that definitely makes sense. Yeah, it's a neat area. I think that, you know, it's um pretty flat and um a lot of brown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Summers get very warm here. Sometimes we get over a hundred degrees. Um, but you know, from a, a visitor standpoint, we do have quite a few wineries here. Some of the folks, you know, I'm here in the Red Mountain AVA, but okay. a lot of folks may have heard of the Walla Walla Valley AVA. That's just mm -hmm. a 45, 50 minute drive from me. Um, but there are a lot of wineries here and a lot of phenomenal wine grapes. Um, we grow over 70 varietals um, in the state of Washington. And so I'm always learning about some new variety that, you know, winemakers experimenting with making or a grower is, you know, they're growing it for the first time. Um, on their vineyard site. So I think it's a state that is um, very eager to, we have a research um, univer uh, university with a research department here, our wine science center. And so they're just eager to figure out like what else can, you know, what else grows here? What else thrives here that we could, that they can share with the growers and winemakers. So it's a fun state to be a part of. I like that because in certain states south of you, it's very limited as to what in certain AVAs that they can grow. And so then you don't have the opportunity to discover different um, vinifera that can grow well. And especially with climate change, um, you're kind of handcuffed. So it's great to hear that Washington um, embraces that discovery. Yeah, well, you know, there's like what, I mean, like thousands of over 10,000 varieties out there. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, but I also think that when it comes to, you know, for me, because I'm newer into wine, I consider, you know, coming in at 2011, for me personally, I'm still very new at wine. Um, I think that if you ask some of our winemakers and owners here, they would say the same thing that we are considered a newer state when it comes to wine grape growing and and wine making, and so I I love that um, we come from the perspective of um, we're always willing to grow and continuously improve, and that's why I think it's so cool that we have these investments in a research um, a university with a, with a strong research program mm -hmm. that says that yes we still wanna we still wanna learn and grow and don't get me wrong because I mean. Washington state wines are phenomenal. I think that we're dominating in so many categories when it comes to quality and flavor of wine. So I do think that we're dominating in a lot of ways, but I also can admire when it's just like, we wanna be better and we want to, yes. you know, to, to determine what else we can do to, to stay on top. Yes, yes. So I wanna share with um, our family here that two of your wines, will be featured in the Shades of Vino wine collection in the spring. So next month, our collection launches. And as I've mentioned before, and I'm so excited about it, it's called Women Run the Vineyard, all female collection, all female winemakers, owners. So, so excited about it. And it was funny because when I first got into this business, I would go to distributors and say, you know, I'm focusing on minority and women winemakers. And they would say, oh, well, we don't have a whole lot of minority women, <clears throat> minority winemakers, but there's a lot of women winemakers. But when I started researching, there's not as many as they would let you to believe that are actually owning the vineyard or our full control of the winemaking process. So I'm so excited 
that you are included in this collection. And we're going to talk about two of the wines that we have. So do you want to start with the Simeon? Yeah, I think that's I think that's a great place to start. OK. Oh, I'm doing the talking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, if there's, by the way, for the, for if anyone did put any comments in on what they think the most widely grown wine grape, white wine grape variety is in our state, um, you may they may have said Riesling because they do see a lot of Riesling um, from the state of Washington. I think that um, we make Riesling very well here, but that's not the answer. <laughs> we do make a lot of Riesling, but Chardonnay would be, which Ch is really? Chardonnay. Yes. Uh, which I make neither one of those. I actually make Simeon. When you look at the amount of acreage of Simeon grown in our state, it's very little. In fact, Simeon, when we um, show the pie chart of what's grown here, there's a category called other white wines, and that's where the Simeon is um, categorized. So mm -hmm. um, what, what you have in um, this beautiful wine club um, is the uh, 2020 Simeon, and ooh, my lighting is kind of blurring that out. The oh, no, it's good. This, we can see it on this side. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. The thing about this one is on the label, not only does it say Simeon, but it also tells you the vineyard that the Simeon comes from. So it's from a vine vineyard called Arts Vineyard, that's A-R-T-Z, and it was owned and planted by the late Fred Arts. Um, he managed this vineyard. It's a beautiful site overlooking the Yakima River. It's a short walk from my winery. And um, we've been sourcing Simeon from them for a few years now. Okay. For this Simeon, it's, we make it very dry. Um, so we um, ferment all of the sugar out of it. And then we sit it in some neutral oak barrels or used oak barrels for about eight months before we bottle it. Now, the purpose of that is to give this wine more of a um, more depth in the mouthfeel. Um, if you get any hints of oak from it, it's just going to be a little kiss of toast. So it's not okay. an oaky wine at all because we didn't use um, like new new oak on it. Um, it was used oak. So you don't get a whole lot of those oak flavors from it, except mm -hmm. for that little bit of toast, maybe a little bit of coconut. But I think what highlights in this wine is green apple and pear. Um, I love it with seafood. I love it with Thai food. I love it with spicy chicken tacos. It's just a beautiful, uh, a beautiful Simeon, beautiful white wine. So um, a lot of people may not have heard of this varietal. This is very popular in France. It is. Um, and it's often blended with, yes, uh, let me post. I'm sorry. I'm going to post this comment here from Alicia. Let's see if we can show it. Hi, Alicia. <laughs> so she thought it was only a blending grape, but it is used as a standalone varietal. It's kind of like Cab Franc has been a blending grape for so many years and people don't really think about it, but it stands very well by itself. Yeah, I've had it in blends. I've had Simeon, like a Simeon Sauvignon Blanc blend is um, one of my favorites. Uh, one of my favorite other varieties that it's blended with and it's, it blends beautifully well. Um, but we have some producers in our state making 100% Simeon. Um, I prefer it dry. I've tasted a beautiful off dry. In fact, my neighbor, Fidelitas, um, they make a Simeon Sauvignon Blanc blend. Okay. Um, and I think they do it really, really well. So Alicia, hopefully you're in the wine club. It'd be fun to have you try this wine and let us know what you think. Yeah, I think so too. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, order it in time or I would be sipping it today. I love the fact that you use neutral um, oak barrels because sometimes the oak and especially the French barrels can be overwhelming. And so you're just tasting a whole bunch of vanilla and you really don't get the essential taste of the grape and the, the natural juices that the grape has. So I'm excited to try that. Yeah, cool. I think you'll enjoy it. Thai food, remember. <laughs> Thai food. Thai okay. food or shrimp scampi, uh, lobster. <laughs> it's a oh, yeah. Wine. yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we're talking about food close to dinner around <laughs> this time here. And then you know what? It, for it to be in the spring, it sounds like it's a great transition wine too. So those who tend to drink fuller body or there's big reds at this time, they can transition to a, um, a white wine that still sounds, you would, would you consider this still a full body white wine? 
I consider like a medium plus okay. uh, body wine, but you know, you make a great point because we, so we're a red house, right? We make mostly red 93% of the wines we make would be red wines, but we do make this one white wine because, um, for those red, we say, we, we say it's a white wine for our red wine drinkers because it still has a nice full, uh, medium plus, I, I would say a full mouth feel. Um, but I call it medium plus body wine. Um, and it has a lot of character to it. Um, it, it, and plus red wine drinkers probably have something that some dish that they, that begs for a beautiful white wine. Mm -hmm. So it's a year round wine for us. Um, we do have it outside of the summertime, but for those red wine drinkers looking for something that can really stand up on their palate and show some beautiful character, I think this would be a really good, a really good option. Yeah. And you know, I know, um, some women of a certain age are looking for more white wines because red wines trigger hot flashes. Mm -hmm. So I think this is great to introduce into their, um, their as an option for, oh, them, for them to drink. That is not just a, a, a Chardonnay. Wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I, I definitely think about that now. You have said several times that you guys are a big red, which I love red. My favorite um, reds are um, Petite Bordeaux, oh. Tanat, um, anything that can bite you back. I, I love those big calves. So let's talk about why you guys decided to focus on the reds. Well, we, we enjoy, I, I think that if, if when it comes to my choice of wine, um, mm -hmm. I, I would grab a glass of red wine um, over white. That to me is just a, you know, if I'm at a restaurant or just hanging out, um, that's what I would go for. And I also think it comes down to like what we enjoy making. My relationship with red wine, um, you know, I'm a very, like I, I'm big with like my a small circle of friends or, mm -hmm. you know, having relationships. So my relationship with red wine, um, offers more than white wine because I am bringing it in from the vineyard and crushing to stemming and I'm taking it through fermentation and punching down twice a day. And then I'm getting it into barrel and it sits with me for almost two years before I bottle that wine. And then right. even after that, you know, I keep a little bit of that wine um, in my library. And so it's with me longer. And so I, I think that it, it, I just enjoy the process of making red wine um, just, just a little bit more than, okay. um, than, than white wine, but we do make some, you said petite for dough, um, okay, about every other year we'll make a hundred percent petite for dough. Oh, will you? Mm. Yeah. It's a, it's a tricky grape to work with, but I find it delicious. Some people find it a little, a little much. Yeah. <laughs> a little that's, much. A, that's a nice way to put it. That's a yeah. very nice way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I definitely enjoy it. For those who are listening in and they are red wine drinkers, let us know what red that you like. Um, so Shay, tell me what are the unique characteristics of a cab in Washington versus that traditional California cab that people drink? You know, that's the interesting thing about, um, I've, I've had some California um, cabs. Um, we did a blind tasting, an event we had, it was a blind tasting of a Napa Valley cab and a Red Mountain cab. Mm -hmm. And the thing that stuck out with Red Mountain is first off, it's fruit first. So it's very fruit driven. Um, okay. big, and, and Red Mountain is a very warm wine region. And so when it comes to the flavors we get, those flavors are more on the ripe, like very ripe side versus tart. Okay. Um, so you're getting a lot of the ripe um, blackberry, um, black cherry, sometimes current on that wine. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a fruit bomb. The other thing that we can get in some of our Red Mountain wines is minerality. And mm. that can be kind of a telltale sign that it's a Red Mountain wine. Okay. So um, I think that when it comes to um, the cabs here, I would just say um, there are beautifully intense in color. They're beautifully mm -hmm. intense in flavor and they're very much fruit driven. The tannin in our calves are pretty assertive. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so that's that's just what we get. And then when we bring that into um, working and working with the barrel program, we use um, we use some brand new French oak on our barrels, but we also like to use once used French oak mm -hmm. um, because we're looking for. And we also use neutral. Um, so we okay. do a third brand new, a third um, what's used and a third neutral is our, is our barrel program. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for enough wood characteristic, but not too much to overpower or overshadow that beautiful fruit you get on the cab. The cab that you selected is a, we call it a red mountain cab. And, um, the, it's a little washed out behind me. Um, but if you can make it out, those, that's a vineyard right behind me. Okay. Like if I were to go out the door, I walk right into this vineyard. Those are the actual vines that the cab in this um, cab come from. So that vineyard's called Red Path. And how, how old is that vineyard? So that vineyard is, let's see, it was planted in 2013. Okay. Okay. So it's got some age on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 got some age on it. So there's some really good fruit that's probably being produced. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful site. Um, the the it's almost like the vines make them. They're like, we know what to do. We're going to give you <laughs> amazing fruit. You know, Red Mountain wine grapes are these very um, they're very small berries in mm -hmm. size and they have very thick skins. And so you get the flavor of wine from the skins right and you get the tannin from the skins and the seeds and so um, with these thick skins you can imagine that we are getting intense color and we're getting intense flavor as a result of those skins being so thick on those tiny berries okay i can imagine so we had latasha um she had posted earlier that her favorite reds are syrah Petite Syrah and Zinfandel. So that's a that's an interesting combination. That's a great combination. Mm. Um, I love those two. Yeah. Um, and especially, you know, regionally, you can go so many different places mm -hmm. with the flavor profile. And then Alicia has, she loves red blends. And it's funny, one time I was speaking with the winemaker and I asked him what was his favorite varietal and he was like, the blend. You never can screw up the blend. So... <laughs> There's, there's truth to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was very safe. And she is also a cab. Um, she's new to Cab Franc and San, and Sangiovese and Grenache. Those are great. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a great um, flavor combination. So oh, awesome. as we mentioned, the cab is also in the package and it's the 2018 cab. So I, on your on your page doing research, there's a picture of your beautiful family in your vineyard. And there's a picture of your son and he's very little. And then you look at another picture and is he like 12 now? Is How old is he now? <laughs> he's, I guess almost, he's nine. He's nine, okay, he's nine. He's tall, he's tall. He's nine. tall, he is a tall kid. He is a tall nine year old. Yeah. Um, is he, um, enjoying the family business? Like, is he growing up and and enjoying picking grapes and doing he, that part? He, he enjoys it now. You know, he grew, he learned how to crawl in our winery. He learned how to walk mm -hmm. here. And um, so a lot of our club members have watched him grow up. So he's very much been a part of, um, of us and our business. And, you know, Early on, when he needed a little more attention, um, it mm -hmm. was it wasn't fun at all because you know we would be in production and we're making wine all day long, and we stopped just long enough to have dinner, and then we right. tell him he's got to stay over here because this is a safe space where we don't have equipment and stuff like that, and then we would say you're gonna go to sleep here, but you're gonna wake up in your bed, and so um, you know he really didn't like it that much. But then as he got older, you know he's helping us clean bins and. Um, he can correctly pronounce Cabernet Sauvignon and Simeon. And for mm -hmm. him, he loves the vineyard and he loves providing tours. <laughs> he That's is nice. so amazing at touring our vineyard. He knows what all the equipment is in production. So he can talk through that stuff. He just, um, 
and now I think he's, you know, he wants to, he thinks he wants to own his own um, like custom crush facility. He doesn't call it that, but essentially what he's trying to say is a custom crush facility mm -hmm. where he's, you know, making wine for other people and, you know, things like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I'm going to keep an eye on it. And I love those progression pictures. So thank you. You'll, you'll, have, to, you'll have to keep <laughs> changing that. Thank you. Um, so you've been at this for 10 years plus, and then you decided to make a bold move because you were, you are the co-winemaker and behind the vineyard, but then you decided, hey, I'm going to make my own label. So tell everyone about that. I went to an event called Celebration of Black Women in Wine. In fact, when I did a live, I did one with Krishan that you were you were talking about. Mm -hmm. She was one of the Black Women in Wine that I had met. And um, this was a few years ago in Miami. I had never seen another Black female winery owner or wine brand owner or Black female winemaker. And I was so inspired that I was just like, it's time for me to step my game up. You know, I've been working in the cellar here and making wine here. And I was just like, you know what? I, I want to step up my game. And so I was inspired to create a label that I feel is a more of a reflection of me. Um, for example, for Frechette, we we play with Bordeaux varieties. We really don't step into Rhone or anything else. And I thought, mm -hmm. I really want to work with Syrah. I've always wanted to work with Syrah. And so I created this label called Sachet, which is that <laughs> image behind me. Very fierce. Yes. Well, Sasha fierce. Yes. <laughs> so Sachet is um, my baby. It's a play on my name. And I, I make a Syrah under that label. And I also make a rosé. Very cool. Now, I had asked about those, but are they are they sold out? Or are they only limited to Washington? For Syrah? Or mm -hmm. for the Sachet label? Yes. Sachet sold out. So I um, that Syrah sold out in um, less than four months. Um, however, the Rosé, I'll be launching in May. Okay. So it'll be released in May. And I made a lot more than I did last. So, you know, wine's one of those things. It's such a long runway, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm making it for 18 to 24 months. You know, I'm trying to predict how much I can, how much I'm making and how long it will be in our portfolio. Okay. And so by the time you know that you're you're running out, it's like it's too late. It's not like you can go to the back and, you know, mix right, <laughs> make right. Some more, right? <laughs> right. Like you can't like add filler. It's not like crappy. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? We'll just add some filler. Right. Or just, well, just go to the grocery store and pick up some grapes for me. Right, right. Yeah. They <laughs> quite work like that, huh? <laughs> So are you growing those grapes? For the, I'm not growing the grapes for the rosé or Syrah. So I get the rosé from um, from a from a grower okay. um, from Shaw. The, the grow the name of the grower is Shaw Vineyards, but that rosé comes from Basin City. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a little little drive from me, and okay. then the Syrah comes from a vineyard called Red Heaven, and mm -hmm. it's just a bicycle ride up ride up the road for me. Oh wow! 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 So will we, you said th there will be rosé. Do you think that you'll expand that label and there will be different varietals? You know, I, <laughs> one of the things I like to, to make is a sparkling wine. And, um, you know, I don't know when that will be. It, it might be, it probably won't be this year. Um, okay. I, I haven't planned on making it this year, but I might focus on, making a sparkling wine next year under the sachet label. I think that will probably be it. You know, just the rosé, um, the Syrah, and a sparkling wine under the sachet portfolio. The sachet is a little bit smaller. You know, we make mm -hmm. a lot more for Chet. For Chet's a little more focused on uh, Red Mountain and some vineyard desinate right. wines. Okay. Um, so I think that with that portfolio, um, focusing on on that, and then sachet is just a small, a, a little more limited um variety, a little more limited quantity of wines, but I'll definitely continue making it. My heart's pulling me towards doing that. So I'll continue to make it. Well, we're here for it. <laughs> we, yeah. we, we are here for it and we are happy to come out and try and taste and sit around with the table with you. We are here for it. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And that must have that feeling of, okay, I'm going to do this must have felt really empowering. 
Well, I was empowered and I was inspired. I think that for me, I just didn't want to lose that momentum. So mm -hmm. I went to this event and when it was over, I still had to take the flight back from Miami to um, Washington State. And so that just gave, you know, I, that means like I had to sit myself in one place with my own thoughts, you know, and just be. So that was just the prime opportunity to sketch and plan this out, you know. Um, I didn't have any other distractions. And so I think I really wanted to um, keep that momentum going, like while I was on this high mm -hmm. of being inspired and empowered. And I think that really made the difference. That I didn't yeah. wait until I got back home and, and was distracted or jumped back into work, that I had that time to really get my thoughts down and clarify my vision for this project and um, design what my goals were you know, I think that made the mm -hmm. difference for Sashay. That's, that's, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm so happy for you and proud Thank you. Thank of you, you that, you know, you took the challenge and you did it. Thank you. You did it and it, and it <laughs> sold out. Like, <laughs> Thank you. So you did it well. Um, Alicia would like to know, um, do you come to the East Coast for events? You know, we, um, not so much um, anymore. I actually launched Sashay in Miami um, at the next, celebration of black women and wine um i'll be in dc for uh an event in april it won't be it's like it's a different sort of event but to, alicia to answer your question i have not done any events on the east coast however i'm from the carolinas and so at some point when i get back to charlotte i'd love to do something in that area or if you guys want to have me in dc for something Oh, we I can figure out something. I can come up. I can <laughs> get to DC. We actually ship to DC, which is which is easy. Um, those mm -hmm. we only ship to about 15 states. And so it's a little easier getting to states that we ship wine to. Yeah, we'll we'll have to talk off camera because maybe you know the other places that you ship to, we could organize something. So that would be fun. Yeah, we we'll have to figure out that. So um I was sharing with you that March is Maryland Wine Month, and you said it's also Washington State Wine Month. So if someone was in that area in, in March, what would they expect for um, Washington State Wine Month? And are you guys doing anything special? They'd probably be overwhelmed with winemaker dinners and special tasting events. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on. I love the Washington Wine Commission site because they list a lot of events happening here. Mm -hmm. So one of the events I'm, I'm doing um, a few. Uh, Roost is a small wine shop in Moses Lake. They're doing a, a beautiful, beautiful wine tasting event. They always do some some great events. I'll be in Seattle for a couple of events. One of the chefs is um, Chef Aaron over at Sorrel. He's doing a, a winemaker event. Uh, there that I get the opportunity to be a part of. Okay. And so those are the types of things that you'll see are some of these smaller intimate winemaker dinners where we're featuring um, wines that we select for, for those events. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And so what does the future hold for Frechette Winery? For us, we just acquired 16 more acres on Red Mountain, which is a huge, huge, huge deal because our original acreage is only five and a half acres. And so um, we just have a little estate vineyard here, but we acquired um, 16 acres more that we're preparing right now um, for planting. And so that will be exciting because right now we source most of our wine grapes and I love the growers we work with. They do a phenomenal job. Um, but for us over the next four years, we'll transition into being more mostly estates. Okay. And then we'll also source from um, some of our growers for some vineyard designate wines. Okay. And so if you were in, um, if somebody was visiting, you have a tasting room where people could come and um, sample your wines. That's oh, yeah. 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 Our tasting room is open every day, noon to five, and we, we're in the Red Mountain AVA, but if someone were traveling here, they fly into Pasco. Um, okay. their, their daily flights, few, a few flights a day from Seattle to Pasco. It's like a 30 minute, 30 minute flight. Um, there are a dozen wineries, just very close proximity to me. And then 200 wineries within like an hour's drive. <laughs> there are a lot of, there are a lot of wineries in this, uh, in this area, but we do some, some dope events. I mean, we do a soul food dinner. 
Farm to Fork. I have a Motown jazz concert. So a lot of really wow. cool stuff we, we, we host at our winery. That is, that is so cool. It makes me want to hop on a flight <clears throat> and head out there. I have a cousin who lives in, um, she's right outside of Seattle. Okay. So I'll just drive down. You should. I, I'll just drive down. Yeah. And I do see, I mean, I drive to Seattle. Mo, I'm usually over in Seattle, I don't know, a dozen times a year. Um, and when I go over, sometimes I do it in a day. So I'll drive over for a wine event and then drive back that mm -hmm. same day. So it's an easy drive. And um, yeah, I would say, let's do it. I'll okay. come see you. You come see me. Yes, <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have to do. We'll have to do that. So I have a couple of questions, completely off topic. Um, are you Are you ready for it? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, ha I guess I have to be. Huh. <laughs> All right, shoot, go. Let's. Okay, so we just finished the Olympics. Did you watch the Olympics? I was in and out on the Olympics. So some of it I, I tapped in for some of it. Most of it I did not. You know, it's funny because as a kid, I was glued to the channel with the Olympics. And now it was just like, if I, you know, if I catch it, I catch it. But I wasn't, I wasn't like, oh, I have to watch mm -hmm. this particular event. So my question to you is, if you were Olympian, what sport would you participate in? Well, there's the sport that I would participate in is not currently offered in the Olympics. <laughs> I used to compete jump in double dutch. And Did you? Yes, I was a double dutch jumper. In fact, my team went to what what we called it the world championship, but there was nobody outside of the US there. There were a lot of other states we competed against. Man, those those teams up in Connecticut, they were in New York. Woo, man, they were awesome. But the South Carolina team beat them all out. Um, so I would say double dutch would be would be the sport. Are you like you know what we should have you against Michelle Obama? Let's do it. Why well, <laughs> she can jump? I've seen. She, I would still. I would practice. I will take her. I will take her. <laughs> that is that is very impressive. I could. I cannot do it. I could turn. Like in uh, recess, we would hey, have it. That, the tur you gotta, you've got to have good turners now. You've, you've got to have good turners. So don't underestimate being a good turner. I, But I could not, I could just could not do, get in the middle of the So very envious. Very envious. <laughs> How long did you do it? Oh, for fifth grade through 10th grade. Yeah. Oh, so I was, it was, it was very. It was serious. Younger. Yeah. Oh, we did flips in the rope. It was, I mean, it was the, the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, let me look. Let me find. You know, how it was YouTube. And let me <laughs> do some Google searches. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that that is very very cool. Well, I just yeah. want to say I am so thankful um, for having you in the club. I really appreciate it. I'm extremely jazzed about it and all that you're doing. I know recently. You participated in the International Wine um, Conference? I did, yeah. Yes. Um, and I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend, but I know it was probably a fabulous event. Mm -hmm. And and you don't realize how many people you are influencing. Mm -hmm. So just thank you for everything that you do. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's thank you for having me. This is you know, like I said, I'm usually I'm watching in the lounge and um, it's been amazing um, watching you with this platform, Elevate Women and Wine. And so I see you, too. Thank you. Thank you. So please tell people how they can find you, um, your wines, um, how they can follow you on social media. I love when people follow us on on LinkedIn, of course. Mm -hmm. um, on Facebook and Instagram. I'm most active on Instagram. So we're just at Frechette Winery. And that's where we show a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Like yes, day before yesterday, I was into an inventory or if I'm cleaning barrels or filling barrels, all of that stuff we show <laughs> on, on Instagram. So if they want the behind the scenes stuff as well as what's happening in the taste room. That's the best place to find me. That is, that's a great, I think 
people don't appreciate LinkedIn. They just look at it as this kind of networking type of thing. But it, it's amazing how it's developed um, as a platform. And it's more than just networking, but it's an excellent social media platform. It is. It is. It is excellent. So thank you again. I appreciate your time. I know this is in the middle of the workday, so thanks for taking time. And um, if anyone has any parting comments, please put them in the chat before we sign off. Thank you, fam, for following us. Please um, check out the wines. They are going to be in uh, the wine concierge. And um, join the shades of vino and that's how you'll be able to experience them because if you're not in the club you won't have access to them so join the club thanks again and have a good evening and good day everyone